The iPhone XS and XS Max are amazing flagship phones that excel in all areas, especially with their breakthrough dual lens camera system, consisting of two 12 megapixel sensors, one wide angle and one telephoto, making them capable of producing studio quality shots. They both use Apple's A12 Bionic chipset and are among the first phones to use the very latest processor cores, which are built on a seven nanometer process, meaning that they're extremely powerful while still being extremely power efficient. This extra grunt allows for advanced photo and video processing and makes the iPhone XS and XS Max some of the best phones around for photography and arguably the best for videography. But the trouble is they're extremely expensive. If you want the very best and you can afford it, then great. But what if you don't want to spend that much, but you still demand the very best when it comes to your photos? Well, there are some excellent alternatives such as Huawei's P20 Pro. It's not quite as new as the iPhone XS, but the price has come down over time since it was released back in March 2018. When it comes to photography, it's just as good and some would say better than Apple's new flagship. The P20 Pro is packing a 40 megapixel main sensor, a secondary 20 megapixel monochrome sensor and a third 8 megapixel sensor with a telephoto lens. But the really clever thing about the P20 Pro is that it uses all the data that it collects from all of these lenses to deliver you an incredibly sharp and detailed 10 megapixel image by using its light fusion technology. The P20 Pro also uses its dedicated AI processor, which is built onto its Kirin 970 chipset to identify scenes and objects and adjust the settings accordingly to further enhance the quality of your shots. The truth is both of these are incredible smartphone cameras and this video is to help you decide which one suits you best. Let's start off in the camera apps. Although the layout might seem quite similar on both of these two devices, they're actually very different with how they're organized. The iPhone has an emphasis on simplicity, keeping the settings out of the way and not cluttering up the screen with options. If you need to change things like video resolution, then you have to go into the main settings menu and then scroll down to camera. By contrast, on the P20 Pro, all the options are pretty much here on the screen at once, with a whole lot more settings underneath the more tab. By comparison, it does feel a little bit cluttered, although it is fairly well organized. But saying that, unless you're used to using smartphone cameras, you might find it a little bit confusing or miss some of the features that are in here. Some will prefer the iPhone simplicity, although I think that many people would also prefer the amount of options and shooting modes that you get with the Huawei. Things like the aperture mode, which allows you to set a simulated aperture between f16 and f.95, and now also allows you to shoot video. Huawei also has the night mode, which will deliver you a sharp and noise-free image in very little light, but relies on you keeping the camera still for at least four seconds while it takes multiple exposures and combines them together. There is no night mode on the iPhone. However, it does have extremely good low light abilities, and in my opinion, does have better low light performance than the Huawei does without its night mode. Still, when it comes to low light, both these phones are very impressive. The portrait modes on these phones are designed for taking pictures of people and generally will keep your subject in sharp focus whilst defocusing the rest of the image. The iPhone definitely has an advantage here as it allows you to change the level of blur to suit your taste after you've taken a shot. And in my opinion, it does have a smoother and more natural graduation between the focused and defocused areas of the image. The AI systems on the Huawei will automatically recognize when a person is in the image and switch to portrait mode for you, providing that you have the master AI switched on. When it comes to video, the iPhone XS definitely has an advantage over the Huawei P20 Pro as it is able to shoot smooth 4K video at 60 frames per second. Although the Huawei can shoot 4K, it can only manage 30 frames per second and the stabilizer, as brilliant as it is at 1080p, does not work at all at 4K. To me, the iPhone is a clear winner when it comes to video. The only area the P20 Pro trumps it is in the slow motion, where it's capable of shooting a short burst of video at 960 frames per second. Although the iPhone cannot achieve such a high frame rate, all its slow motion modes are delivered in 1080p, with its max frame rate being 240 frames per second. So let's take a look at some of the photos side by side. The Huawei has slightly more contrast than the iPhone, although this does seem to vary as the AI does adjust the color settings and contrast depending on the scene. The iPhone does give you a flatter image, which some people will prefer. Here you can see that the Huawei has pushed up the saturation quite a bit more than the iPhone and has actually added a touch of vignette to the image too. A lot of the images that you will get from the P20 Pro seem like they've already been photoshopped and essentially they have, with increased levels of sharpness, clarity and saturation. The iPhone on the other hand delivers you a much flatter image which is much more preferable if you wanted to edit your photos later. 
Overall, they both produce great images and it really just boils down to whether or not you're the type of person who likes to edit your own photos or not. The Huawei P20 Pro's AI will basically do all the editing for you to give you what it thinks is a pleasing shot. The master AI on the P20 Pro isn't for everybody, so it's good to know that if you need to, you can switch it off. Overall, I would say that the P20 Pro is more versatile. However, the iPhone probably does produce higher quality shots overall that are much more suited to editing later on and has much better video. But whichever one you choose, you will not be disappointed. And I hope that this video has helped if you was interested in buying any of these two phones. I'm David and you're watching Direct Mobiles TV. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content from us. We have over 24 years of award-winning customer service, so find your next phone at Direct Mobiles.